preaching. Okay. So I'll talk about preaching. This preaching method God gave me is called God's nature preaching method. It's also a Bible study method. Uh, but I will also talk about some preaching skills. Okay. Now, if there are pastors coming, you can tell them. Okay. Okay. Now, um, first, I want to introduce this method. It's, it's a method to you know, to let people know about God's nature. For instance, we know some people, you know, let me ask you, how many people you know are very, very nice? That they're always positive, always helpful. How many people you know are like that? Not too many, right? But if you come, but if you come across people who are nice, you remember that these people are nice. Their personal quality will attract you. So when we teach or when we preach, we let people see how wonderful God is, then people would Admire God more and like God more. When they know how God is so loving and patient and accepting people, and God has a lot of blessings waiting to give to us. And God's holiness is very beautiful because in heaven, the people are all joyful and full of love. So the people in heaven are all holy. And when you go to heaven, you say, wow, how wonderful heaven is. Because heaven is totally holy. No one sin, no one get upset. Everyone is full of joy and full of love. So holiness is beautiful too. So when we teach, we will let people know to see how beautiful holiness is. So we want to Then people will like the holiness of God. So So whatever we talk about God, we let people like God. And then people would like to have a good relationship with God. And people would like to follow God and, you know, be blessed by God. So first, the preachers and the Bible, the person who leads the Bible study, must really always see the goodness of God. And then whenever we speak, people can hear how wonderful God is. And then people would want to follow God. And people would learn, you know, what you want to live 
in a godly way also. So now, for many people, the preacher is like this, oh, you have sinned, so you repent, and then God will bless you. But, but when I preach, I was always say how wonderful God is. How beautiful he is. And how wonderful his holiness is. And how wonderful his blessings are. And then when we follow God, we'll be blessed greatly. And any sin will block the blessings of God. Since we block our relationship with God, so we don't want to live in sin, and we want to hate sin because sin is destructive. It will destroy our life. So we want to hate the sin and repent and give up the sins. So I motivate people to follow God by His grace. And I hope that we all, you know, see the beauty of God. Whenever, and then whenever we talk, we always talk about how wonderful God is. Okay, now I'm going to use some illustration to talk about how to preach. I'm going to use this passage, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Now we have talked about that on the way here. But I haven't talked about how to put it into put it into a sermon. So Okay, so I'm gonna read it and then you read it in your language and then you pay attention to it because we'll refer to it from time to time. Okay, what it says is, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Now please find a passage for him. So, so, he'll, so he'll read. Take, take your yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah, come here to read. Facing the people loudly so that people can hear. So my new about to basolo kuya new. Mwe tike chipali kosi ange muingire muingire kunze kwa anga ndi mchefu ero mumbe fumu mutima na mwe muri dava. Thank you. Now, you can have different themes for this message. You can have the theme of how to put down your worries. You can have a theme of learning the gentleness and the humility of Jesus. And you can talk about rest of the soul. You can talk about the yoke of Jesus is easy and his burden is light. Okay, 
So first we want to find the theme. And then for the theme, keep the theme for the whole message. Sometimes people preach about one thing and then they talk about other things and then people get lost. So we want to keep the same direction all the way through. Okay, now first I will talk about the structure of the message. Now you can write this down. Now first, the theme I choose for this message here is how to have no burdens and live in a, 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 you know, a burdenless way. How to live in a burdenless way. How to, you know, how to put down our worries and live in a burdenless way. Burdenness, no burden. Okay. Now, the structure of a message. I, I will introduce you to you a simple structure that you can use in many messages. I don't mean that you use you have to use the same structure every sermon, but I'm saying it can be used in many messages. Okay, the first point is the introduction. To let people know this, you know, to raise the interest of people. And the second point is, now that's the introduction, and then the first point is how people suffer under this problem. So how people suffer under this burden. And then the third is God's nature related to this theme. Okay. And then, number four, you can have why people cannot have this God's nature, of this nature of God. Now, it's important that you write this down. And then, and then number f the four point is, Okay, I will go through this again. Now, let, me, let me go through this again. The first introduction is to raise the interest of people in this topic. Okay, and then the first point of the message is how people suffer when they have this problem. And the second point is God's nature related to this. God's nature related to this. Okay. And then the third point, why people cannot live out this God's nature. And then number four, how people can live out this nature of God. And then number five, challenge to people to live out God's nature. Now, for this message, now I'm going to go through these points. First, 
introduction. Okay. Now you can have different introduction to so raise the interest of people. For instance, you can say, "Do you want to live in a burdened way? You know that with burdens all the time and worry all the time." Kati wabango yangu, so mlo kubabuza. Oya kala kubeya, mumu guku, elanya mumi zivu, etiye lo kubango kabamu ikaseya, ngobuza bantu bobuira. Or do you want to live in a carefree way? You you know. Uh, that we are so free like the angels in heaven. Okay, give me some room. Okay, now, so first raise people's interest. Do you want every day, oh, I'm unhappy. I'm burdened. Or do you want to be happy all the time, even when we have difficulties? Now, now I want to also want to say about the tone of voice and a facial expression and our body gesture. When we preach, it's best to have change of tone of voice, change of expression and gesture. For instance, you can say, oh, do you want to live with burdens all the time now? The tone of voice is different. Now try to do the same as I do, okay? Yes. Yes, I will do it. Your voice is always High level. Look at me. Yes. Do you want to live in a way oh, so harsh? Oh, yeah, with the change is better. Get people with this. Kadi, you Yeah, okay. Because if we speak in the same tone all the time, People will lose attention. Now watch me. In one sentence, I can change the tone of voice within one sentence. Okay. Now, for instance, sorry, let me see. Okay. You can say in one sentence like this. Oh, you know. Sorry, let me try to set this, okay? Now, some people live in a lot of burdens and unhappy, but some people can be joyful and happy all the time. Can, can now, you, notice uh, how do the same way. Yes, I yes, do, yes okay? I'm going to do. So, uh, when I guess this, sir, now go on, Makati. Nji, oh, you're going to come here. Muburamu, oh, buru, oh, buru, oh, buru, me. Oh, go to your Gaza. Oh, you're going to come here. 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 Okay. Yeah. And also, when you speak, also, the speed. Now, listen to me. <laughs> For instance, you want to contrast this. You want to say some people, they are burdened. And then some people are happy. See the key words I emphasize? Some people are burdened, but some people are joyful. And when you, people see the contrast, they know you're comparing two things. Kati, you see that? Do the same thing. Do yes. the same thing. Yes. Okay. Ola mo kani sa. Mo yama amantu ngaba na ku ngeda ngaba na fu ngeda ngati ba yina aman ngeda ngaba ba nyivu ngaba uli kibi aba nyiziza nyoka ba ngaba ngaba ba sa nyufu ngeda ngaba ya ngeda ngaba ni mo kani sa ne ni mo chitwa di nzawa wa mu no laga orumi e o ni orumi aba agende la mu no le we sa nyu ya na ina agende la mu. Now, you, you, you're saying more than I, what I said. It's, yeah. Make it short and clear. Don't expand. Don't expand. Yeah. You're interpreting. Yeah. Look at me. Yes. <laughs> Some people are burdened. So you, it's like you contrast this. 
and some people are free. <laughs> so you're contrasting two things when then you when you come to the words burdened and free, then you show the difference. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, do it again. <laughs> Oh, Munto, have I no room? Oh, where is it? Taro, Tinayaka said, I got to. I didn't know about Gamusanu Fu, Elamola, a son of Jaino Kubanga, Aina. Now I noticed that for you, the tone of voice is more always on the excited part. <laughs> now try to say this burdened, joyful. Can you big difference? Listen, listen again. Yeah, <laughs> burdened, joyful. Show the contrast. Yeah, I got me when I get the angel. Oh, Mugu. Okay. Now also, that you notice my voice of joyful is different from yours. Listen to me. Joyful! There is an explosion of sound. Burdened, burden is heavy. Burden or joyful! Chigambo chito no nyo eh? Ate chila ganti wali wo bugu dala ovuzi to eh? Na ye esanyu haga digazi wa esanyu digamba chigazi wa nyo eh? Okay. Now this came from also from practice of voice. Wa wa wa. That's the sound. Ela na ba. Ya strength. Na ba ya kuiga amarozi ga kuiga mukwa tu la ebigambo. Gumango yogira. Oh you know who ga yiga? E mugu gu no kuda ga. Today my voice is not very good. But you can see how when I have the explosion, the sound, that strength, that can you hear the strength that came from practice? That open of the, you know, uh, of the. Uh, the mouth cavity. Okay. Okay. Now that was the introduction. That was the introduction. Now we, now we come to the first point. About the condition of people when they don't have this freedom of God and when they carry the burdens. And you can call this point also the problem of people. So here you can talk about you know, for instance, I use an illustration. If you worry about your child who is sick, it's like the whole day you just think about your child. And your heart is heavy. And it's hard to have strength to do other things. Now it's natural when your child is sick to be heavy. But some people live in a burden way the whole lifetime. Now, you notice how I changed my voice. They live in a burden way for the whole lifetime. Notice the change of tone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, try it. Okay, okay. And then some people, you know, because of the subconscious mind, subconscious mind, because they've been hurt by people so many times. That all the time they say life is difficult. And they might say, nobody likes me. No, 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 Okay. Or 
You know, I cannot do anything great. So to describe this, so that people feel the feeling. Or if I ask you a question here, how many of you really like yourself? Can you raise your hand? If you like yourself. Now, let, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Now, some people say, I wish I were him. I wish I was someone else. I don't want to be me. I don't like to be me. So, how many of you really like yourself? I'm happy to be me. Okay. Now, now notice here how I say. It. How many of you are happy to be me? Happy. The key word, happy to be me. So the key word is emphasized. Okay. Okay, so how many people are happy to be you? Raise your hand. Okay. So, how many people are happy that you are you? And you, are happy, and you are happy with your life. Okay, could you raise your hand? <laughs> sure. Okay, now let me show you. Okay, let me show you. Okay, let me show you. Okay, let me show you. Many people look at their life, they say, I don't like myself, and they live in a way that is saying, I don't enjoy being myself. Okay. Now, you notice what I'm doing is, I make it more personal, my message, I make it more real, that people feel, yes, this is my problem. Okay, now how can I make it personal and real? Because I have experienced it myself and I remember my experience. Notice my tone. Because I have experienced it myself and I remember the experience. You notice how my voice, the tone of voice change. Okay. Say. Now remember it's important not just the tone but the speed of the words. That I experience difficulties and I remember my difficulties. I remember the experience, so I slow down there. That then you can understand better and feel better. Kakari, go mango yoke. Oyinzo koke nati. Ebizibu biyangi bimani. Ela na ne 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 ebizibu biyona bitegeira. Ela no mango osobora okub yoke la. Gira ngobi tegeza ngobi mani burunji. And also my expression and my body motion all match with that. Now there is something we all need to practice. Now, for the expression to match, you know, the burden. Ah, so heavy. To match that. And then the body gesture start from the feet. The body gesture is not just the hand, I'm, I was burdened. It's like this, from the leg. 
I was so it starts from the leg. I was so burdened. Era eche intu echo ni kitani kida kubi gele mpaka kumutwe ngo gamba ah ah ni no zito zito wede dwa eh eh zito wede dwa nze na. Now let's practice with this. Now watch me first before you do it. Now the change of tone and expression on the face and the speed now and the body motion. Look look here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now everyone set up. Now, now, do it the same way. Uh, Washington, use the cell phone from here. Use the cell phone from here. Okay. Now watch here. Now watch again. Hallelujah! 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 Lakes. Hallelujah. 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 To learn and practice. Okay. So the the expression and the body motion. Look at me. Body motion. Okay. Now, so I just now I said, you know. The problem of people when they live in this difficulty with burdens. And then we use more real examples. Now some people are used to not to be happy, they're used to this way of thinking. And then what happens is, even when they are doing regular things like sweeping the floor, washing the dishes, they are happy. Because the negative emotions have sunk into their subconscious mind. That, that the person is, you know, for the whole day is unhappy. Okay, now so this is the first point. The problem of people when they don't live out this nature of God. Okay, and then the next point is God's nature related to this. You know, God is very busy every day. God has to do many things with one person. He handles all his different experiences. And help him to be blessed in each of these experiences. Kagadi katunda. Afuba nyo narwa na kumuntoi omu ngamuwa na ko bulingeli yona na muwa ni dida mukumu omu kesa nevi tuvi njenga umuntoi omu. Now because the Bible says God works in all things for the good for those who love Him. Kumanga Bible gamba nti katunda akolebi unji yona koyo amagala. So for each person, the many. You know, experiences we have, but God working all these experiences so that it's all for the benefit of this one person. It's motion and then you can take the picture. Okay. Now, but that's only one person. He Help each person here. And he helped all the people. 
That he's helping all the each person. Isn't God busy? He is very busy. But does God get burdened? Does God get burdened? Does God say, oh, there's too much to do? And the people don't listen to me and don't obey me. Does God get unhappy? But God doesn't get unhappy or burdened. That every day he is joyful, heaven is joyful. Now this is something I hope you all like about God. When you have so many things to do, can you be free and joyful all the time? And full of love. And also when people don't listen to him, God doesn't get unhappy. He's still joyful. So the more the more we understand God, the more we like him. He's not affected by negative people. And that's why Jesus said, I'm gentle and humble. Now, when you describe some qualities, you want to describe the opposite also to show the contrast. Now this is very important skill. Please write this down. Write this down. Now I want to talk about how Jesus is gentle and humble. You want to write it down, how I describe it. I can first describe the opposite and show how Jesus is not like that. And show how Jesus is not like that. That you know, I show the opposite and then say how Jesus is not like that. Now, let me ask you parents here, have you taught your children? You maybe you teach them how to do something or teach them how to, to read the book or whatever it is. And you teach him one time and he doesn't understand. You teach him one time and he doesn't understand. You teach him a second time, he still doesn't understand. And he doesn't listen attentively. And after a few times, how would you feel? You will say, why didn't you listen to me? Why can't you learn? Have you have you, have you had experiences like that? Yes. That you are impatient with someone when the person cannot learn? And then you get frustrated. Now let me ask you, is Jesus frustrated when we have sinned many times? 
Katonda, Timunizer, we can't use it to move to use it 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 to use let me ask you, how many times do you think a Christian sin every week? How many times? Now, hopefully, hopefully we don't sin often. Hopefully we'll handle our sins. But it's the fact that many Christian sins, you know, many times they say, oh, things are difficult, I don't like it, I'm angry, you know, I have lust, you know, different kind of sins come into the mind. But God, but God doesn't say, I'm done with you, I don't want you, I don't like you. And God continue moving the heart. Let me ask you this. When you have sinned and then you pray to God, does God do this? You're no good. No, you're no use. Does God do that? Even when we have sinned many times, God is still very gentle and patient. Do you like God for that? Do you like God for that? Let me tell you, when I think about God's nature, I like Him very much. I don't know, you know, maybe many of you know ice cream. I like him more than ice cream. <laughs> I like God more than anything in the world. Because he's so gentle and humble. So just now I use a contrast. How people are impatient and they are frustrated. And God is always humble and you know patient with us. And also, for instance, how God raised us up to serve God. How God raised us up to serve God. He will teach us day by day to grow. Let me tell you, for myself, when I have all these ways of preaching, God has taught me all this step by step. And I thank God He's the best teacher. He's the most patient preacher, a teacher. He's always gentle. And humble. Humble to come down to each one of us to help us. He never say you're too foolish, you're too dumb. Even when we are foolish, you come down to our level. To teach us in simple ways, simple language. So Jesus is gentle and humble. There is no one like him. Now, when you hear my description, do you like him more? Do you like him more? 
So I hope every day you think about how wonderful God is. And then when you describe God's nature, people can understand it very clearly. So when people have burdens, they know that God will help them. Okay, now so that's God's nature. He's, he has a lot to do, but He's still gentle and humble. And He's always joyful. And He wants all His children to be joyful and free like Him. But, but, you, but you know, you might say it's too difficult to be like God. Now, and now I'm going to talk about the third point. Why is it hard for people to have God's nature? Why can't people be like God to be so gentle and humble and joyful? Because when people have problems, they don't think of God. And most people don't have the habit of holding on to God all the time. And most people don't have the habit of getting strength from God all the time. And many people have the habit of Thinking about the difficulties all day long, the difficulties. So, so all day long, we carry the burdens. We'll say the children don't listen to me. Work is difficult. Ministry is difficult. And so all these burdens sink in our life. That's why people frown. And unhappy. And overwhelmed by the workload. So that is why people cannot live like Jesus. And Jesus said, take my yoke and learn from me. Learn from Jesus how you treat people. Because Jesus knows God is in control. When Pontius Pilate tried Jesus, when he tried Jesus, when he judged Jesus, when Pontius Pilate, Jesus, eh? Pilato. And when Jesus did not answer his questions, and Pontius Pilate said this, why did not? Why didn't you answer my question? Because you know I have the I have the authority to crucify you or set you free. Pontius Pilate thought he has everything in his hand. But Jesus had the full confidence everything is in, is in God's hand. So Jesus answered him. If not for the authority from above, you have no authority to treat me, to try me. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that your whole life is in the hand of God? Yes. 
Everything is in God's control. No one can run away from the eyes of God. He, he can see your heart now. Whether you really like God's nature, or you are dozing off, you're sleeping. Now I hope you are attracted by God's nature. You are attracted. I hope you are attracted by God's nature. And then you say, My whole life is in the hand of God. I don't have to worry about anything because God is in control when God is in control I can relax yes 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 I can relax. You know, yesterday I put the pictures here on Facebook. And there are different people who came online and said, you know, can you come and bless us? So when I follow God's way, God will open the way for me. And God provides for me so that I have the money to support to go to different countries. So when you follow God, God has your life in his hand. And we, and we don't have to worry. See, you know, the more we worry, the more power we have. Have you noticed? Now, I'm describing the people who cannot have the of the uh, the nature of God to be free and joyful. Have you noticed that people who carry the burdens, they have more pain over the head, over the back, more health problems. They cannot sleep well. You know when we worry, the whole life is in trouble. And they cannot, and they cannot get the strength from God. So this is why people cannot be free and joyful like God. Okay, and then point number four, how to be joyful and free like Jesus. 